If I look back to a, my very first placement, I can remember that phone ringing and it was Christmas time and they said, would I be willing to take a little girl's too? And of course we said yes. We were so excited, my heart was pounding, stomach butterflies in my stomach. We run around the house, finding out toys that would suit a two-year-old. And then when she arrived, she was a gorgeous little girl, two years old, winter time in a little summer dress. She had head lice and worms. She needed a great big hug. And it was just a wonderful experience. Two years later, she moved on to adoption and a completely different child. And we'd gained so much from having her with us. I sort of came into fostering through my cousin's children who she was having trouble with and they came to live with us and they were really challenging children and we managed with them without any support. Um, we thought if we could do it without the support then why not give it a go and do it with the support under the fostering team. When we first started even thinking about fostering, um, my mum and dad sat all four of us children down and told us and basically gave us the opportunity to say what we felt if we wanted to do it. I didn't think, I never really looked into that deeply, I didn't think I'd be allowed to. I'm a single man, living on my own, no kids. And I didn't think that they thought I'd be suitable. Uh, well, a after I, I was approved in September, it was a couple of months before I got my first placement. Lo and behold, that Friday night, the knock came, and then he came with his carer. And I was a bit nervous. I'm sure he was a little bit nervous as well, and, but, I got him to sit down, we had a little chat, and I got the PlayStation on, and uh, we found some common ground, and uh, after that he soon felt at home. What impressed me most with the little boy that we've got at the moment, he's matched absolutely perfect with what we wanted, and we know that he's not going to ever go home, and that he's with us long term. When we first started, um, Southampton Foster Team were brilliant by matching us with a child that really fitted in with our family. Um, not only did she fit in, our children actually got on with her very well. Children come into care for lots and lots of reasons. Um, sometimes it's just to provide overnight care if mum or dad are going into hospital and there isn't anybody to look after them. Or, of course, it goes right through to that the children have been really badly looked after or in some cases hurt and therefore the local authority have removed them because mum is not looking after them how she should be looking after them. Um, and those children come with all sorts of different needs. Some of those children will be really, really easy to look after and some of them are a bit more challenging. With the help of social services and fostering, we were able to have a child come to us and uh, as a family we worked with that and initially our uh, a uh, child came to us for six weeks and he ended up staying with us three and a half years later and he's still with us. As we developed as carers, we found that um, we were given more complex children and we weren't worried at all about it because with the complexity of the children came the support from the foster care services. The, my main worry, my biggest worry was that, <laughs> that the kids, that the children were going to take over that my mum and dad would care more for them. My real major worry was uh, being in the wheelchair and not being able to walk far. My biggest regret is I didn't do it earlier. I listened to all my worries. I worried about everything. I worried whether the house was big enough. Um, I had four children. I worried about that. I worried about the dogs. Um, I just worried. I, the biggest worry I had was the judgment. Would they judge me? Are they going to look into my family and start judging whether I'm a good parent or not? And they don't do that at all. That's not what they're there for. They're there to encourage you. I can remember when I first started fostering and they said about training. I mean, I'd, I'd left school at 15. I'd not taken any exams. I was petrified when they said to me, you're going to go on training. I was so relieved when I got there. It was such a good experience an opportunity to meet other carers, share experiences and soak up the knowledge. Two years ago I felt that I was in a way finished because of being in a wheelchair, that I wasn't needed anymore and I'm still young and I do want to be needed and now life's just changed so much. I suppose when I first started fostering I was thinking about the financial side of it. I needn't have worried because they do give an allowance which covers everything from the child's food to the clothing, any transport, 
covers their birthdays and holidays as well so there was no worry but as time went on and unfortunately I became a widow so I'm a single carer now I had to really seriously think about how I kept a roof over my head but in Southampton now they've introduced a payment scheme. When we were um, going through the fostering assessment uh, we discussed with um, our assessor who the different types of fostering um, we could look at respite fostering which is just overnight or two or three okay. nights stay short term uh, yeah um, short term fostering which is anything up to two years and then long term fostering at the time we th- wanted to do respite and short term fostering because it was best for us the selection process was really interesting it, it took a long time and I, I was allocated a social worker who came to see me initially to, to see whether they thought it might be a good idea for me to apply. Uh, they, they gave me the approval. Then I was uh, allocated another social worker who took me through the training process. And she came and visited me once every week, talking about why I wanted to be a foster carer, what I, what I felt I could offer. Obviously they went into the background of my childhood, and my husband Kevin's childhood. Um, went through police checks to make sure that you were going to be that right person to foster. Uh, We're actually level two payment carers, um, which is a recognition of skills-based payments. uh, And it's based on um, our knowledge that we've picked up, the training that we've done, qualifications which we've gained. And it means that we're in a situation where we get extra money apart from the money we're given to keep the child. Um, and it means that other doesn't have to work. So we try to make them feel welcome. And then you have like a honeymoon period where you're both really treading carefully. They're not sure about us and we're not sure about them. And then before you know it, they're settled in and you're either doing the school run or um, taking them to swim in and things like that. And and you're settled into this this role. and as time goes on, and it goes really quickly, it's, it's such an enjoyable process, it, it really does go quickly. And then decisions start being made about where they will move on to. Um, and then you're brought back to the fact that they're not our children, we're, we're looking after them for somebody else. You know, you can make a difference to someone's life, you know, and uh, you know, you're know you not going to be on your own because you have the support of uh, the uh, Southampton fostering team. Um, we have a supervising social worker who uh, the ones that we've had have been very very switched on people um, and you can ring them up and get you know just have a chat to discuss an issue get support they come and do regular visits with us which is um, our reviews to uh, ensure that everything's going right we can reflect on what's happened over the last three months so that we're able to really keep in touch and keep there, but uh, very, very good people who uh, you know you can rely on. For anyone worried that they might receive a child, they don't think it's suitable for, for placement in their house, don't worry about it. When they do need someone to go somewhere, they'll phone you up and they'll talk about the child, their background, any issues they may have, and it's up to you to, des- to decide whether you feel comfortable taking them, whether you have the experience, whether you could provide them with what they need. Uh, you can decide at any stage whether it's for you or not for you. All I can say is, in my experience, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, My latest young man, I'd had him for 10 years. And when he first came to us, I could never, ever have imagined him living independently. And a month ago, he's moved into his own little flat. It hasn't just benefited our, our young person. It's really benefited us as a family. There's so many good times. And to see a child come into your house and change for the better is far better than any money in the world. I would say to anyone who hasn't picked that phone up, who hasn't filled in that form, do it now. It'll be the best thing they ever do. Look at me. I have to say, I've regretted immensely those wasted years. I wish I had applied earlier.